coming up on Coast in the Desert. Welcome to IMG Worlds of Adventure. So cool. We're the only ones here. There's no one on these pathways. There is not a single other person in line for this ride. I've never done anything like that before. Welcome to IMG Worlds of Adventure. This is Dubai's largest theme park. You got three roller coasters. Uh, they have the Marvel characters here. So we're used to seeing these at like Disney or Universal. So that's definitely different to see. That reveal of like walking in the door and it was just like all this. I was like, that's actually really cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Look at the yeah, lots of dinosaurs right up front, lots of lights. This is cool. And that parking lot was deserted. There is no one here. Which it's also very quiet in here. Yeah. I don't think there's many people here at all. This is giving major like Zaderland vibes. Like even the way that the hands are moving and stuff, it's fantastic. <laughs> Blue, how did you get all the way to Dubai? So this is a lifesaver. We got City Pass for Dubai, which gives us access to four attractions in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. And we paid like $260 for this. And you can use it for any attractions on their list. And one of them is IMG Worlds of Adventure, which normally a one day ticket is $100. So we're gonna save quite a bit of money by doing that. All we have to do is show our City Pass at the ticket booth. They gave us our tickets. Thank you. And then we can bring that up to the front entrance. Right when you walk in, big old Chinese dragon. It's amazing. Look at this, guys. I know. I'm looking at it. This, this is, is so really nice. cool. This is really, really cool. Wow. There's a train coming. What? You can just ride a train around the park. That's fantastic. Lots of graves and spooky trees outside of the haunted hotel here. This opens at 3 p.m., so. We will be back later. Here's the Eurofighter. You can see the vertical lift up here. I guess this is gonna be up first. You ready? I hate Kurslar. You hate Kurslar. <laughs> Cry about it. It's called Predator. I'm riding this Predator before Darien Lakes. Yeah, this is actually a pretty common uh, Eurofighter model. We've done a couple variations of this. I think this is the same as like Hydrus at Casino Pier, the one at Canopy Lake. What's so funny is they sell fast track for this, so you can skip the line if you want, but the parks here don't get any crowds. So, say what line? Yeah, why would anyone pay for that? Alright, here we go. About to climb on board this year Raptor. All right, so we just rode Predator. I've at least done this layout where it's a lap bar only, and obviously that is gonna be better than this. However, it wasn't that bad. I mean, there was one spot that was pretty pretty jolty, but other than that, it wasn't that bad. My issue with these, with like the the over the shoulder restraints, besides like the head banging back and forth, the distance between my shoulder and the top of it is pretty big because I'm not that tall, so like, when I come up with like, you know, some negative G-forces, I slam into them pretty hard and it's kind of painful. That's my biggest thing. 
Uh, but other than that, I mean, like, that's kind of just like a Eurofighter thing, period. Not just this ride, so I can't really be that surprised. But it's really just one rough spot. Um, it's definitely dark back there. It was also fun when you crest over, you get to see, like, the entire, like, Avengers area that was back there. Like, I saw a uh, Stark Tower. Next up is the Forbidden Territory. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what this is. I think it's a dark ride. It's giving Jurassic Park, maybe Dinosaur at Disney World. Oh, that could be really cool. Yeah, I know. We avoided a lot of spoilers before coming here. So, I didn't look up anything. Yeah, I, I know about the three roller coasters that they have, but that's really it. And I know there's an Avengers Dark Ride. That's... Yeah, but dark rides are way better when you don't spoil them. Roller coasters are like, they can go either way. Like, Because at this point, we know what to expect with a lot of things. Right. But this, wow. Wait, what? Wait, what is this? Uh, it looks like dinosaur. Oh, heavens, I'm excited. All right, gang, time to hop aboard your time rover. Let's go get that dino. They are dangerous unless the seismic activity is rising. Yo, Forbidden Territory was surprising. That was Amazing. pretty cool. I yeah. did not expect it to be as detailed as it was. Yeah, the, the movement of the ride vehicles was like so dynamic. And like, it reminded me of Dinosaur from Disney World. No, yeah, that ride definitely surprised me. Cause, Cause when we walked up, we saw the ride vehicles kind of look kind of looked like dinosaurs um, a little bit. And then when we started, the ride vehicle started to just do this weird motion. I just was not expecting it to do. And for what the park is, it was actually really well themed. I will also add uh, the movement is a lot smoother than dinosaur. You know, this is like very like, all right, we're going to rotate you around dinosaur. gliding. Yeah. It's a family friendly dinosaur. Yeah, dinosaur uh, at Disney is very aggressive. This one is much more like Please, please get them out now. So get them out now! Yeah, this please. is yeah, and and this is, uh, takes its time more with the scenery where a dinosaur like flies by. It. This like shows you because the different capacity. scenes. Yeah, capacity. capacity. At yeah. Disney, they're like, get them out, get them out, get them out, get them out. Here, they're like, ah, there's no one here. We'll let them take their time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Whoa. I. That's. Concerning. I can't. I'm always like, okay, I'll try to figure this out, but I literally can't figure out an explanation for this. That I is guess weird. that's a baby. Is that the baby? Just it's a chicken. It's a chicken coming, coming out, out of its hoo ha. So just what? Saying. So what came first, the chicken or the dinosaur? Dude, they got a big potato. Plate. That looks amazing. There's wing stuff here. That sounds so good right now. I'm not even gonna lie. Also, we're about to enter Cartoon Network. This should be really cool. Cartoon Network Live, there's a Ben 10 ride, and an Adventure Time ride. This is actually really interesting because I'm used to seeing like Nickelodeon lands. So I don't think I've ever seen like a Cartoon Network land. I know that Drayton Manor used to have one, but uh, they don't anymore. What are you doing? Literally why? They have a list of show times here outside of Ben 10, so I guess that's a show. But this Adventure Time ride, I'm pretty sure, is a dark ride. This should be cool, even though I have never seen the show. I can think of a couple parks that need signs like this. Remember the Taiga wall? I was literally about to say the wall and the two for Taiga. It was just covered in graffiti. These people did not listen. Well, technically they did, because it's like... They carved it. Yeah, they carved it. It says no writing. It doesn't say anything about carving or chiseling. You're right. Ah. This is cool. So, Adventure Time the Ride. Uh, it's like a moving dark ride. So you have like actual like scenes, and then you have more monorail-esque 
moments where it's like yeah. going over the pathways. I'd say it's uh, Seuss High in the Sky trolley-esque, but the track is overhead. I don't know much about Adventure Time. The cue music is pretty cool, but the ride was interesting. I thought it was cool. You got like a tour of the park. There's like yeah. an aerial view. I loved it. I had no idea that it did that. Somehow, I guess we came into the Cartoon Network area where you, you, you couldn't see that attraction. The animation style is really funny and it like had a lot of personality. It had onboard audio, so it's narrating you through the whole thing. It had some really good smells, too. It it smells like, like apple pie. pie yeah. 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 Good smells, and as we looked down over the pathway, we also saw a parade going on, like Chinese New Year. Yeah. There's the parade again. <laughs> Looks like there's also a ropes course here. You can go all the way up to the ceiling. I bet the views up there are fantastic. All right, we're gonna do this amazing ride of gumball up next. We're in like a school building. This is so interesting. Here's a bunch of trophies we won. What? Some art projects. What the heck? What is this? I also don't know anything about gumball. This is a trackless dark ride. I repeat, we're about to ride a trackless dark ride. And it's a shooting ride as well. That was really fun. That was cool. It's that like very fun. Uh, shooting dark ride, lots of screens, but you're going through like a school. I don't know anything about this show. But no, I don't even know what show it is. One thing that I really liked about it was that if you shot the wrong things, you actually got points deducted. Yeah. Because so, most dark rides, if you, you only you shoot get, aimlessly. Yeah, but this was like <laughs> like bad. It deducted points, which I thought was pretty neat. Yeah, I thought that was cool well, too. Well, and we didn't know that at first. Yeah. So like the first two scenes, I'm shooting the main characters, and it's like, no, Why you're not you shooting the main characters. Because you shoot. It's a shooting dark ride. You shoot everything. <laughs> That's like dark ride number three that we've yeah. done so far. Yeah, I think there's and still I, plenty more. There's more. That's crazy. And it was pretty, Love dark rides. And it was pretty impressive. Again, like for the park, the dark rides that we've been on so far have been. Pretty good. Oh yeah, that was actually really cool. Yeah. I like that. It's moments like this when you stop and look around and realize we're the only ones here. And the award for coolest air race ever goes to the Powerpuff Girls Zamperla Air Race. All right, which Powerpuff Girl are we each? I feel like I'm your Blossom. What? Bubbles and your Buttercup. Buttercup's always PO'd. I literally yeah, don't. Know, I don't know who any of those are. <laughs> <laughs> The Haunted Hotel is now open, so I think we're going to get in line and go check it out. This is a very, very impressive facade. See, you think it'd be obvious that you don't need to have a sign saying that you go to the back of the line and that you can't, like, jump the line. However, we have encountered actually quite a bit of queue jumping since joining this trip. Uh, saw a lot of it at Atlantis and Global Village. There's an age limit for this attraction. You can't be under 15. Wow. All right, we're going inside. They said we have to put our cameras away, so we'll bye bye. tell you guys about it afterwards. So, the Haunted Hotel. Well, that just absolutely, like, beats the one at Global Village that we did the other day. Like, it's yeah. not even close. This was really impressive. The sets were, like, extremely elaborate. Like, and it's, everything's very, like, tall and grand. You know what I mean? Like, it's not necessarily more well themed than like the ones that like Horror Nights, but it's, first of all, it's not that far off. But the fact that everything's so tall and large, like it feels more grand. Yeah, it feels very immersive and not like, poor, it's, it does not feel like it's poor, it's poorly put together. So, pro, so props to them on that. The only thing that I really like had to like complain about was that there's not a lot of actors in there. There were maybe four or five. Yeah, there were maybe four or five. The they sets were, were awesome. I, w I wish they had more actors because then that would have made it like a really good experience, but. Overall, it wasn't bad. Yeah, I liked it. What, you yeah. were scared? No, yeah, oh, these two are like gripping each other's shoulders no, the whole worry. time. My, and my shoulders are sweaty from Matt's like hands, man. And I had to walk slow because Sarah's like holding onto my backpack yeah. for dear life. The the lack of characters actually added to the suspense because you don't know when they're coming, but still, it would have been better if there were more people in there. Hey! Arms are so small. High five. High five. Oh. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. Right, we're exiting Jurassic Park and going into Marvel Superhero Island. <laughs> oh, Looking universal. Such universal. All right. Let's see if they do it better than Avengers Campus. 
They made this whole area look like one big city street. So you have sidewalks, trees, lamp posts, big old buildings. And then here's our second roller coaster. It's a clone of Sierra Sidewinder and Storm Chaser at Palms Park. Why does this literally look like the entrance to the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man? <laughs> it is so funny. So, Spider-Man, we've done this layout before. I'd say Sarah and I's experience was pretty accurate to how it normally is. Matt, your experience was a little different. Take it away, darling. Oh, oh heavens. Okay, so <laughs> our ride, so the uh, the car I was in, it was it was off balance. It was two people behind me and me on the other side. And when we went over that lift, it was just nonstop, like. I don't know. I looked over. I was like. Yeah, we were spinning. I, I don't think I've ever spun like that on a spinning coaster before. That was absolutely insane. I'm trying to like think about the layout, but I really couldn't because I'm just watching Matt just go. You know, literally, <laughs> I, I was trying to be like, where is everything? But it's just, I, I couldn't because we were just spinning so much. There were so many visuals though. Like I, I feel like because we were spinning less, I saw more of them than you probably did. But even so, like you're moving so fast, like I didn't get to take it in as much as I wish you could. Um, that being said, I don't want it to go slower or anything. It is a very well paced ride it more than and fast paced ride. Like yeah. it's, it's fast. There's a lot of cool merchandise here. That's so sweet. How much for this one? I'll take one Spider-Man hanging from my ceiling, okay. please. Right when you walk in for this Avengers Dark Ride, it reminds me of like a hotel, like front desk or like a lobby. So, all right, there's a bow for Hawkeye. Okay. Yeah, here's Thor's hammer. And then of course, Captain America's shield. I like this so far. This is really, really cool. I wish it was themed to a better character other than Ultron, though. I was never a big Ultron fan. There's definitely much better villains in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is really, really impressive. It's also funny how much huge space there is for this ride. Like, they're just waiting for huge lines for it that will probably never come. It's kind of wild. Welcome, trainees to S.H.I.E.L.D. I am Director Fury. No, you ain't. As we speak, the entire city is under siege by Ultron, an angry killer robot with an army of drones. You will provide support to the Avengers while they save us all from total annihilation. Ooh. All right. Banana 3D goggles. What kind of ride vehicle is this? This is so interesting. So we just got off Avengers Battle for Ultron, and when we walked up to that ride vehicle, I don't think any of us had any idea what clue. we were about to Did do. Did not clue recognize that kind no. of ride No, and then it backs up and starts moving, and we're like, oh, this is like, like Spider-Man, yeah. or even like Justice League Battle for Metropolis. Probably more like that, cause, but it did have a good mix of practical sets and screens. Oh yeah, the practical sets that it had were Oh, very elaborate and yeah. very detailed as well. Like you That's could see. That's kind of the theme here. It yeah, seems. it's it was very over the top and fantastic. The only the only complaint that I really had is that the pra is that the practical sets were more so you kind of just tra traveled through them. But other than that, it was it was well, really well. Well, that's why wealthy. it reminded me of Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. Or at Universal, I mean, not quite as good, obviously, but it was really awesome. Yeah, it wasn't paced quite as well as uh, Spider Man at Universal. But you know, it's it's like takes its time through the scenes. Mm -hmm. But it, there's stuff happening, you yes. know. Yeah. Um, you know, all the Avengers make an appearance, and it, it's just really cool. I think that this is a dark ride that probably should be talked about more mm -hmm. because I never heard anything about it yeah. prior to riding. I didn't. No. I knew that there was an Avengers dark ride here, but actually, that was probably the only dark ride I knew was here, which well, is kind of funny. I but didn't know. yeah, yes. I'm glad I didn't know. But also, I kind of wish that more people knew. That is literally Talikan. Like, that is superhero Talikan. Like, you can clearly see where the inspiration was. The structure that it's in. I love how you have Thor and Loki on each side. That is some cool presentation, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up, we're doing Hulk 
3D, which is just this crazy looking attraction. We don't really know a whole lot about it, but it sounds very different from anything we've experienced. This should be really cool. I am General Ross, commander of the Epsilon Base. In moments, you will be witnessing a demonstration of the most advanced and powerful military hardware available. As you know, today's world faces new threats. Superpowered menaces like Florida. The Thunderbolt Mark 7. Building on the foundation of its predecessors, the Mark 7 is the pinnacle of evolutionary design. Looks like your father you just got extinguished, Jim. Oh, I see my good ass. Oh, it's so real. Welcome to the Iris, the wow. independent rescue integrated shuttle. This is really Please cool. Across your row as quickly as Holy possible. crap. And make sure you're safe I've definitely never seen anything quite like this before. What was that? Guys, that was holy crap. That, that was really was... cool. Man, I, I've never done anything like that before. I'm like honestly speechless. I was so bad we could have shown you guys what that was like I know. to experience. But it, in all honesty, you just have to come out here and do it. To me, it was like a significantly better version of like a 4D theater. Because oh, a lot of times sure. you ride like a 4D theater and you sit in your chair and it just like goes eh, eh, like the old Shrek one and stuff. But this one, you're like, you know, so you're dynamic. immersed and it's dynamic. And like the movement is like throughout the whole theater instead of just like your individual seat. And like, it was like very chaotic, yes. whatever was going on. And some, I think that the motions worked better at other times than some others, I guess. Yeah. But like, that was really crazy. Yeah. Really crazy. I mean, you guys saw what the theater looked like. So there are seats all the way around and it's just one big dome. So the screens is all around you. So there's yeah. stuff happening on all sides, but it makes you feel like you're in this big giant like room and then it transfers to outside. Uh, there's bad guys, there's Hulk, Iron Man is in it. Uh, they, a lot they, of action. They, all, they, all, they also do, um, there, there is one spoiler I do want to say, but they do a really good virtual loop in there. So like you don't actually go upside down, but it does a really good job of making you feel like the entire room just boom. It was it was really cool. It was also a pretty long experience. Yes. So like you, it was. yeah. I mean, it's not ever, your spoon broke. Yeah, that's the third one. Yeah, they're not very good spoons. Rolled ice cream is very legit though. Yeah, so you really feel like you get like a substantial show. They have them like what every half hour, yeah. something like that. So. Don't miss this attraction. No, I am yeah, don't, so don't blown away. Like, a lot of the rides here have been really, really impressive. Oh yeah. But that one stands out. Like just because of how one of the best ones. Just the the uniqueness of it is just insane. We stopped to get lunch or dinner. I don't know something like this. It's right across from Avengers. We got that shawarma place. So there's chicken in this. Sarah got falafel, falafel in hers. Mm -hmm. I got the same as Taylor. I, yeah. told, I told them not to tell me what it is because I don't know what it is. I don't know how to pronounce it. Does it taste good? Oh, it's fantastic. All right, well, then that's all that matters. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, really good stuff. I am thoroughly enjoying this meal. So as we're chilling here, sitting for a second, taking a breather, uh, one thing that really occurred to me is just how huge this park is. Like, I look up at the ceiling and I realize that this place is like the size of a normal theme park and it's an indoor theme park. Like, it you do a lot of walking here and I don't think I fully realized how big this place was until we we're just walking around. It is really really impressive also because structurally the building doesn't really have any like big support columns in the center. It's just one big dome. Okay slightly revised statement. I found one support. <laughs> Look they theme it so you don't even notice. I guess that's the whole point right? It is continuously immersive. And here we are riding our final roller coaster, the park's biggest. It's Velocic Coaster. I feel like we've ridden at least one other ride with this name, haven't we? Velociraptor? Velociraptor? Yes, uh, the one at Paulton's Park, Family Boomerang. That's, That's the one. also Velociraptor. This will probably be better. So glad we don't have to wait in all this for, you know, a Blue Fire clone that we've done two other versions of. They could have had like other attractions. Yeah. Instead of using uh, all this area for you, you, space. You easily could have fit some extra rides here in the same space that they have for this queue. This queue is so long, I cannot believe we are still walking. Oh, I think we found the station. I think we found the station, all right. 
Are we the only ones in it? That yep. is the question. We are. Yes. There is not a single other person in line for this ride. Oh my gosh. It's just us. So one downside with this is that they have to wait for a mostly full train before they can dispatch it. So the train's just sitting here. Yeah, and like if people like on the previous train want to re-ride, they're like, no, you have to go all the way around and it's like very, very long. I'm like if you're trying to fill trains, you should just let people ride. Yeah, because it's a huge so it take forever walk. otherwise. Yeah, it takes like five minutes to exit and then go all the way back around. All right, so we just got off our second ride on Velociraptor. They make you go around. It is uh, an ordeal, but I guess that's just the way it is. They're just sitting there waiting for a mostly full train in order to send it. But it's still a fun ride. It is a fun ride. I think that that is probably like the best pace of the Blue Fires that I've done. I would agree. I've only done Blue Fire at Europa Park and this, mo and this one. But out of two, I noticed a significantly better difference with this one because I feel like the launch is more punchy and we didn't even slow down in the blocks at all. No. We just flew right off and in the back we got some wicked air time. Yeah. It was like negative 1.3 coming off the blocks in the back row, which is like almost comparable to El Toro on like the <laughs> first Camelback go. It was insane. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's really just that one moment as far as airtime goes. Then of course the blue fire roll, that final inversion, always good. Uh, has some, some really nice whip to it. There's also some good theming elements yeah. uh, in the ride. So it starts off with this like little dark ride section where you're going past all this uh, greenery. And then when you stop at the launch, it is this big screen where you see a T-Rex roar and then you start accelerating and it as you- It distracts you yeah. enough that you don't remember yes. you're gonna launch. Yeah. yeah, and so it actually feels like kind of an abrupt takeoff and then as you are accelerating, the screen also moves with you. Uh -huh. And then you blast straight towards a big cave that has the T-Rex like mouth and you just fly through the mouth. You get a good whoosh noise. Yeah. And then uh, there's one other point, like at the bottom of the loop, there's like some big dinosaur bones that you oh, pass really? under. Yeah. So like overall that, that is nice. Uh, I, I do appreciate that. Yeah. So here we are. Back at the French Inns to IMG. As we head out, concluding our day at the park. This place was great, right? Like, I don't know, I had an awesome time. Yeah, it's really, really beautiful here. Like, the thing is fantastic. I'm sorry, I'm like, no voice. Shocker. Uh, great rides. My biggest thing is, like, the atmosphere just feels a little off because of the fact that it's so empty. Like, there are a lot of staff members, and it feels like every move you make, like they're just kind of watching you because they have nothing else to do. Um, because there's nothing really going on. So it's like almost like a weird, like suffocating feeling where it's like everyone's just like, huh? Like, oh, huh? look, a guest. Wow, I haven't seen one of those in five minutes. I know. <laughs> I literally was looking at the kids' zone and I was like, because they have all these blobs in there. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll go in there and like look at it really quick because we never went in. And there's literally three employees all standing there like this at the front. Like looking at me like, what you gonna do? And I was like, never mind, I'm just gonna walk it's like away. That, it's, it's, it's like that meme of the stick figure just poking the world that says, do, do something. something. It did kind of feel like we were here towards the end of the night all day, because it was just so empty. But at the same time, that allowed for us to get on a lot of rides. And speaking of rides, I was not expecting much. I'm gonna be candid, I was not expecting much, but every single ride we rode, I was, pleasantly surprised and even like I interacted with some of like the characters and like the Chinese dragon that was walking around the, the, the park all day like woohoo it was very it, friendly yeah, yeah it was I had a great experience overall I think it's I, great that they like keep it up like keep the happiness like up even though it's like kind of discouraging that there's like nobody yeah, to entertain I'm not gonna lie I don't know how many times I could walk around the park 
as a Chinese dragon when there's literally nobody in the park. So I, I give them props. Felt like a private VIP day, I yeah. won't lie. Yeah. It was very interesting. I will also add another thing that really impressed me is just how brilliantly this park was designed because you can't see any of the other lands from the current land that you're in. It is completely immersive. You can't see 99% of the rides mm -hmm. until you're on the ride, and there it is. Like, unless it was Surprise. designed <laughs> to be seen on the pathway, then yeah. you'll see it. But most of the rides were not designed to be seen for the pathway. You just see the entrance, and then it's like a discovery. It's like, what is this going to be? Well, even and the then, stuff that is out in the open, it's still like there's stuff all around it that you don't exactly. even realize it's a ride half the time. Yeah. <laughs> the size is also just like, vastly impressive. This place just has like so much to it. We did like a couple laps around. I'm like, wow, yeah, I've been walking all day at a theme park. So like, I don't know, even though they only have three roller coasters here and the lines aren't bad, I still think that this is like a pretty much a full day experience. 100%. Yeah. Their it's dark great. rides are just amazing. And even like a few of their flat rides are 100% worth waiting for. It's just, everything here is just awesome. Yeah, it is a little like, hard being in like the dark all day like the fact yeah. that we are going outside now and there's like i haven't seen sunshine since like early this morning it's yeah. a little like ah. but other than that i mean that's what indoor theme parks are kind of like so yeah. how much you can do i get why it's indoor too it gets really hot well and speaking of heat i wish we had a park like this in orlando to be honest like i think about a place like this would do so well there i think yeah. about like the the cartoon network area how different that is from like Universal, but still like, it's like a step below Universal. It's still like really, really good. It's like almost there. And I don't know, like Florida gets so they, they hot. Compete, though. I yeah, don't. it's just, I don't know. I, I wish that there was places to the scale of this because even the Nickelodeon Universe parks are nowhere no, near as God, cool no. as no, this no, is. No, no, no. So yeah, I think this is definitely worth a stop if yeah. you are out here. So oh, 100%, yeah. we're going to go ahead and drive now to the Sky Views Observatory, which is going to give us an amazing view of the Burj Khalifa to end out the night. It's about a half hour drive. Let's go. All right, we made it to the entrance to Sky View. We just went through security. We got our tickets. So two cool activities that you can do here. One is an edge walk, very similar to the one that we did in New Zealand. And that's what you can see in the picture right there. The other is a glass slide, which we will be participating in. Going up. I would hope so. To the 53rd floor. Yeah, I like how the options are literally one okay. and 53rd. One and 53rd, yes. Seems a little bit uh, oh, underwhelming shit. after going all the way to 125. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, ears popped. Oh my gosh, we're starting with the slide. No way. Oh, that's it. Whoa! You can't even see the top. What? 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 Come on, Hello, brother. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Slide was kind of neat. That was cool. He literally screamed the whole time. I don't know why he was like acting like he was. Oh yeah, scared. sure. <laughs> the thing is, like the glass is like not very clean and like clear, so it was kind of like. It helped. I mean, yeah. It there were a lot of smudge marks on there. Yeah. Um, it was fine. It was all right. Yeah. It's it's a novelty. I, I, don't pay extra for it. If it comes with your thing, then do it. Yeah. <laughs> I know that during the day that can get like a really long line and oh, like, really? yeah, like some people wait like 45 minutes for that. Well, yeah. So be glad that we just walked onto it. We didn't even know that we were gonna do it. It was just like, oh, go to the side. We're like, oh, okay. Look at the fountains. Oh, holy heck! Oh, oh. So, we're, oh so we're on the backside of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on the stop with your backside of water. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. I know, right? Man, Mama Bird looking fine as hell. Whoa! Oh, wait, that's scary. That's scary. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not you silly like, grabbing onto the edge. You're... <laughs> Okay, 
Yo, that's like scary. I'm okay, I swear. So now imagine this, but on the Burj Khalifa. That would be terrifying. I think there's a point when you're so high up that it doesn't even make a difference anymore. Like this, I, would it be any more terrifying than this? I don't know. I don't know. That's pretty. That's pretty freaky. Does this look cool? <laughs> For the gram. I'm not gonna post it on Instagram. I'm gonna send it to my mom to freak her out. <laughs> So there you go, a pretty epic end to a pretty epic day. I'm really content with how everything went. Yeah, that park was great, the view here is great. Yeah. The last floor and Matt freaking out over it. I'm yeah. not, no, I'm on it, all right, I, I, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I'm on it. Anywho, You're like regardless, no, I was like, I've been on the glass the whole time. I didn't scream going down the slide like somebody. Um, no, but yeah, today was a really good, today, today was a really good day. I was pleasantly surprised by that. Yeah, me too. I think that's a really good way of putting it. So, yeah. Um, next park we're doing is going to be, I want to say, Motion Game. So, that's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, we're going to be fast forwarding, uh, skipping a day, because uh, the next day we're just going to be doing sightseeing. So, no Coast in the Desert video, but uh, we're excited to show you guys Motion Game. It's going to be a really good time. Yes. So, thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Coming up on Coast in the Desert. This is freaking cool. It is very bizarre seeing the SeaWorld logo out here. Oh my gosh! That was like sensory overload. Whoa. If I can tell you one thing out of all the bajillions of things to tell you to do, do this if you come here.